Welcome back to our Timber Tech decking series. All right. In this episode, I thought we could touch base on the difference between the advanced PVC decking product and Fisher product, uh, as opposed to what I term cap composites or the composite lines. Sure. So can you touch base on just some of those basic differences to start with? Sure. The striking difference, the biggest difference is the uh, is actually the core of the product. So when you look at the, the core of a composite board, uh, we have a very dense core where it's comprised of about 50-50 mix of wood fiber and plastic. And then when you compare that to a PVC product, you've got a cellular PVC. So uh, a good way to think of this is uh, air bubbles. You've got a lot of these little bubbles that are microscopic. They're tiny little bubbles, but it's a less dense core. So um, so it takes away quite a bit of the weight, quite a bit of the mass of the board. So it, it does bring down the weight of the board quite okay. a bit. Okay, I like that. Are there differences in the percentage of recycled content in the two different products? Great question. Yeah. So the uh, the composite boards, like I said, the, the core here is usually a mix of wood and plastic, roughly 50-50 mix, depending on which product you're using. And for our product, the core is 100% is recycled content. So the wood that we're using is recycled wood from various sources. And the plastic, we actually own and operate our, our own recycling company. So we will take post-consumer, post-industrial plastics, and that's uh, what's processed and then goes into the core of this product. So you're talking about 85% of the overall board in the composite board. In the PVC board, you're uh, at your core, you, uh, we do uh, introduce recycled there, and we're about 55, 60% of the core of this board is recycled. Again, uh, post-industrial, uh, post-consumer type vinyl and uh, PVC materials. Okay. And I, I, I know over time, you know, the whole green argument, you know, mm -hmm. to me, this, this definitely has a green component because it's nowadays, you know, your, your warranties are pretty darn long. Yeah. Uh, post contractors tearing up this product in the future, somebody 30 years down the road, ah, I want a different color. I want to do something else. Are we getting anywhere as far as functionally recycling mm -hmm. old manufactured decking? Is that... We making strides there at all? Oh, we definitely have. Uh, as far as the, the PVC product, we actually introduced a couple of years ago, we introduced a program called ASIC Full Circle Recycling, where we'll provide recycling containers to uh, our partners, and then they can supply those to their installers to be put at a job site or a warehouse, or they can be housed at the dealer yard. And you can take your scrap cutoffs, you can take uh, re uh, uh, pipe, so PVC pipe, oh, vinyl wow. siding. Uh, even if you were to tear up a deck, you could deposit that back in those bins. We can take that material, process it, and then again, use that back into the core of the product. Wow. So this is a program that we're growing out throughout the U.S. It's uh, started out East Coast based and we're moving it out to the West Coast. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you, Different brands have had different strategies over time as far as cap and three sides versus cap and four sides. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm going. Sure. Has has a best practice come out of that, or are there still people in each <laughs> in each corner in each sure. supporting their their best practice? Yeah. Um, so on the timber tech side, we've always always had the four sided product, and, and the primary reason was to give the board full protection as much as possible. Mm -hmm to try and keep water from getting to that, that wood in the core of the product. You don't want water or moisture getting in there, which could cause that wood flower to swell and then cause your issues. So by capping it all the way around, we, we give it some of that extra protection. Other manufacturers, and including ourselves, we actually make a three-sided capped board. So um, there's ma most manufacturers are just doing three-sided. And three-sided is fine as long as you have proper airflow for it. Um, you can... Uh, not have that moisture getting into the board. But if you have a deck that's on grade, it's down low, or it's in an area where it's high moisture content, giving it the extra protection is just gonna make that board last longer. Gotcha. I know the fade and stain ward warranties in this category have extended pretty significantly, it feels like in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Do the composite or cap composite product versus the PVC, do you see them fade at a different rate or is that all so minuscule you can't really tell it. Yeah, I think as an industry as a whole, most most manufacturers have graduated to a better performing cap material. Uh, so you know, in the PVC line, we've had a 50 year fade and stain warranty on this one for as, since we've really launched this cap material over 10 years ago. And then in the composite line uh, for the four sided cap, it's a 30 year fade and stain. 
And even when we look at competitive products, we see where they started to come up to where we're at with that same level. And again, I think uh, the, the changes we've seen in the formulation of CAP from our competitors, we start to see where their products are even performing uh, closer to where our products are now. You and I were talking about it, it just seems like the category in general, I know people dig up stuff when they start searching around and, hey, this product had this problem. Well, mm -hmm. it feels like that is really far in the, in the rear view mirror these days. Uh, I just don't feel like it happened. I guess if you stay with name brands, right. and that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, that's actually a good point because earlier generations of our PVC products going back over 10 years, yeah. uh, it was made a different different way. It did, actually didn't yeah. use a cap formulation. And one of, the, one of the early issues we had was oxidation or weathering of mm -hmm. the surface of the board. And there was a way to clean it, yeah. but, uh, but that has stuck in a lot of people's memories. So yeah. I still see on blogs, oh, that product's going to fade. It's going to look terrible. That's product from long ago, several long generations ago. ago. Exactly. Yeah, no doubt about it. And the other thing, too, you know, if people really saw these factories, they'd realize, you know, hey, it's pushing out a lot of units a day, and you just get something in your raw materials that's a little bit off, and all of a sudden you've got a couple truckloads of material that are out, spread out all over the United States, and you kind of got to clean it up a little bit here and there. So it's just, just life, but uh, uh, the reaction... And like I say, for name brands in the market, what we consider strong brands out here, it's few and far between. And usually it's a slight manufacturing issue that just a moment in time. Right. Maybe we shift gears to heat buildup. It okay. feels like it's always been a conversation, but I've seen more and more brands marketing some sort of heat mitigating mm -hmm. technology. And I know yep. you guys have a little, well, maybe you've always been there, but. I'll let you talk about your product. Sure, and that, yeah, you're absolutely right. That is one of the topics uh, from the trainings that I do with our installers that they're saying that are coming from homeowners. Every time they're sitting with a homeowner, the first question is about heat build. So when you basically, the uh, way it breaks down, PVC, because of the core, because of the, the formulation of cap that we use, this is going to be a product that is going to reflect more of that UV and, and reflect, uh, not absorb as much heat into it versus even our own composite. So our PVC against our composite would be actually a little better product. Same color, just the if two talking, technologies would be, one would be warmer. Right. PVC and, would be cooler. You actually have to look at uh, the darkness. When you're doing that comparison, there is a way to compare the darkness of the color. So if you can just say my gray against you know brand X is gray, yeah. uh, that's not a fair comparison, but you can actually read the darkness of color. And when you do that comparison of, uh, of A to B in the same darkness space, PVC is generally going to be a cooler product. Now, the, the, the one thing I do uh, kind of really preface with everybody I, when I tell this is you need to set the right expectation because no matter what, even if you're, you're saying I'm cooler than brand XYZ, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you're always cool to the touch. You, you could be cooler, but yeah. you might still be warm on the surface of it. So uh, in lighter colors, PVC is going to be a, probably your best option yeah. as far as a cooler product. Those were both aware uh, wildfires that seem to be a bigger and bigger conversation as the years roll by in the United States and around the world as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. um, and the WUI codes, the wildland urban interface uh, codes they're trying to enforce right. are forcing people to really think about what am I going to have to do? What's going to be mandated and so forth? So I was just curious between these two products right now is one more in general, more fire resistant than the other and or some of, and I know that code is still getting worked out, Absolutely. but based on how it's written now, is are some of your products meeting some of those? Yes, so uh, two of our collections in the PVC line, um, the vintage and landmark collections, they both uh, carry a class A flame spread designation. Uh, so all of the PVC products are actually WUI certified. Within the PVC line, the Landmark and the Vintage Collections carry a Class A flame spread. They also have a, an ignition resistance rating. So California is actually going beyond the WUI, and parts of the United States are now requiring a Class A flame spread designation, which essentially means that the product isn't going to contribute to that flame spreading on to uh, engulf the rest of the house. Um, so with composites, we do have one of, the, one of our lines in the composite line that is specifically designated um, as a fire resistant product. So for areas that do have that uh, requirement, that code requirement, we do make a product in composite as well that would, uh, would meet that requirement. 
but primarily the PVC is the, the big product that people are using in those markets. Okay. Pat, every time I go on the website or I'm doing my own research, uh, I'm constantly amazed at how many different product lines within the TimberTech brand you have. Sure. And there's just a lot of things that you've de developed over time that, you know, hey, this one looks like hand scraped hardwood or this looks like this and that. So I was hoping you could talk about the different things that have developed over time with the, with the two different products, as well as maybe some of the things you've done to value engineer boards uh, to give people, hey, you know, I want a new deck. I can only afford three bucks a lineal foot versus mm. six, you know. What are my options? So right. I'll let you run with that. Sure. So from, from the standpoint of realistic look, I think our vintage collection within PVC probably gives you the most true wood look. We've, uh, we've actually uh, created display boards that show this product mixed with, in with wood species to let you actually compare it side by side. So uh, you get a really true wood look from this. Now, to your point, uh, within the, the composite collection, there's various textures that we use. So um, you're getting three completely different embossed surfaces on these to give you kind of cover your options. So yeah. if you want something that has a little bit more rustic look to it, uh, or if you want something that has more of a hand scraped look to it, like a, like a hardwood flooring look, uh, or like you say, we have uh, products that we actually make that have uh, scalloped bottom to this so that uh, we're using less material in this. So mm -hmm. it allows us to lower the cost on it. Sure. And that's what we do with the specific reason we made this in this profile was so that we could use it more as a budget conscious, budget friendly board. Yeah. And then from there, we go down to a product that is, uh, like I said earlier, we have a three sided capped product where we're using less cap material and we're also using this form. Mm -hmm. That allows us to lower the price point even more so that we can work within anybody's budget. Wow. Love it. Love it. Thought we could close out this episode uh, talking about your multiple width. Uh, offerings these mm -hmm. days. And I apologize, I didn't bring them, but I think within the advanced PVC line, that's where you did some experimenting, came out with. It's always been that six inch board, but now you've got a four and an eight. And just kind of what drove that? And yeah. were there any concerns making an eight inch board? Gosh, that's getting a little wide. Is it gonna cup? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we did extensive testing on it, which I was, I was part of. Uh, fastening wise, making sure that we were recommending the right way to fasten that product that it was going to hold down. Uh, cupping, big concern on that. Expansion and contraction, also another concern. Uh -huh. So we, uh, we we actually landed that as far as fastening, we can we recommend fastening that product the same way we would any other PVC board with, with face fastening or top down fastening. Two fasteners every 12 or 16 inches is fine. Um, but the, uh, as far as the, the different sizes on it, it was really driven by design. Uh, and it's, again, when you get into the vintage collection, this is a higher price point for this collection. And we, we've seen that at the higher price point, um, design really becomes a factor in, in building the deck. So giving you three sizes rather than one size just allows you more design options. Uh, you can do, you know, doing picture frame, it's kind of a standard look where you're wrapping a border around the deck, but now you can do it with multiple sizes and then do the infield of the deck with a different size or all three sizes. So okay. it just opens up the door to a few more design options. Yeah. Pat, to my knowledge, the an eight inch board, deck board has not been available that I recall. So are you seeing people do anything unique with respect to designs utilizing that wider board? Definitely. Uh, like I said, the having multiple widths give, just gives you more design options in general, the way you can mix and match that board in. It's going to be the same thickness of board, so it'll marry up to the other sizes. Uh, we've seen people actually taking the wider board, and this would be an example of this, where they've, uh, they've notched out the back side of the board, and then they use a, a heat gun, and they allow it to waterfall, so that edge will actually roll over. And you can get one continuous piece. So this could be used uh, as a picture frame. So on the outer outer rim of the, of the deck, and it could waterfall down into your stairs or just off the edge of the deck and give you a, a seamless transition off the side. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be used as a stair. So uh, take your stair tread and run it off the end of the, the step and then run it down the side of your stair stringers. So it's another way of covering up your stringers. You could also use this uh, in this configuration where you, you would have your joint in the middle, use it as a corner piece for your fascia and tuck your, your fascia into the ends of it. So very versatile. That's one of the things about PVC that I love is that um, heat bending, 
being creative like this, there's just a lot more we can do with PVC design-wise than, than what we can do with composites. I'm excited. We'll, we'll drop a few uh, photos in at the end of this episode that shows people because there are some amazing designs people come up yes. with. Beautiful products. Well, I'm really glad that we did this episode comparing the, your two main product lines. Uh, I think it'll give our audience a ton of value and a great perspective of kind of where they want to go before they walk in the building supply store uh, in the greater Seattle area or across the United States as far as that goes. So, Pat, I appreciate your knowledge. Another good episode. Thank you.